ASH 2020, I think, is an exciting um, time for uh, sharing MPN advances uh, amongst the community. Um, one of the drugs that um, I think has been uh, exciting and, and continues to be interesting to explore is imitelstat, the telomerase inhibitor. This is an infusional drug given every three weeks in a pilot study done by Ayala Teferi at Mayo Clinic. There was clear activity shown both in pathologic responses and molecular responses pretty rapidly with this with this agent. Um, and this stimulated a randomized phase two study that was multicentered called the Embark study, um, looking at uh, outcomes of patients with advanced myelofibrosis that had failed ruxolitinib um, and were destined to do poorly to receive this um, infusional drug every three weeks, either at 9.4 milligrams per kilogram, uh, as Dr. Teferi had uh, given, um, or at a reduced dose of 4.7 milligrams per kilogram. What we saw was um, the spleen and symptom responses were, were modest, actually. The spleen response was about 10%. The symptom response actually was quite good, 30%. Um, in a group of patients that were refractory ruxolinib, they had high molecular risk mutations. It was enriched with triple negative patients. These are patients who uh, particularly don't do well. Um, and the median survival in such patients when they discontinue ruxolinib has been reported to be around 12 to 15 months. What we saw in this study was beyond the spleen and symptom response was the, uh, the fact that the median survival in the high dose arm was approximately 29 to 30 months. Um, and this was quite remarkable. And in contrast to the low dose arm, which was about 19 months would appear to be prolonged. Um, and this stimulated a lot of thought and, and excitement, um, not just by me, but many in the field. Um, and for that reason, we're now moving into a randomized phase three study, which is a pivotal registration study of Imitelstat uh, versus best available therapy, excluding um, JAK inhibitors in patients who are refractory to JAK inhibitor therapy. Um, these are advanced patients, again, that are uh, presumed to do poorly. Um, and the primary endpoint of the study is an important and novel endpoint in myelofibrosis, which is overall survival. It's an overall survival endpoint. Spleen and symptom um, are secondary endpoints, but survival is really the, the, the goal of this, to demonstrate an improvement in outcome in patients who are unfortunately um, associated with a poor outcome. What we've updated the audience at ASH, um, and we've uh, done this already at EHA 2020, is that um, there is evidence uh, from the Embark study of on-target engagement of telomerase inhibition. So Imitelstat both uh, reduced HTERD expression level as well as telomerase activity level. Um, and this was more so in the high dose arm than the low dose arm. Um, certain biomarkers of response, um, for example, short telomere length were associated with, um, with um, response, both from spleen and symptom perspective, but also overall survival. Um, and that modulation of the driver mutations, such as JAK2V617F, was seen more prominently in the patients who had the higher dose arm than the lower dose arm. Um, and again, this was associated or enriched in patients who had spleen symptom and survival benefits. So really the abstracts tie in um, on target engagement, um, as well as modulation of a surrogate marker for disease burden. Um, and uh, we also demonstrate that there is an association between um, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. So patients who had um, uh, longer um, or greater uh, AUC24 exposure to the drug, regardless of the dose, um, were more likely to have optimal PD effect, whether it's telomerase activity reduction or HTER RNA expression level. So correlating exposure and PD, correlating PD and outcome were the updates at ASH 2020 with Imitelstat and really provide additional confidence and additional motivation to go after this lofty goal of overall survival in a randomized phase three study. So I look forward to um, the next study uh, with Imitelstat in patients who are refractory to ruxolitinib um, and overall survival is the primary endpoint.